Hello everybody, Maven here, and Season of the Wish, aka Season of Stasis and Solar, has been out for a few months now, and I have yet to do a single stasis build this season, and that has to change. So I know I wanted to build around Shatter Dive, because it's particularly powerful this season because of the artifact mods, more on that later. So this is going to be a Frosty's build video, however, during the background gameplay at some point you may see some Six Coyote gameplay, because I already recorded the footage and I didn't want to let it go to waste, but it's the same general idea, because I was fully convinced that the Six Coyote was going to be the best exotic or shatter dive hunter historically that is the exotic that i would go for when i play shatter dive hunter because of bomber spam therefore better glacier grenade spam it made perfect sense however you know me i'm a perfectionist i don't like to put out half-baked content so what i do before i make a build video is i will take a day and i'll sit there for hours all day and i'll just build craft and try out different options for a build to make sure it's optimized before i put it out there that's what I do. And so I was already fully convinced on Six Coyote before I decided to explore even more options. I tried out the Frosties just to humor it. Humoring things is how you find out new things in this game. And so my mind was blown and Frosty is actually way better than I remember it being. So let's break down what it can do. Remember, if you enjoy the video, hitting the like button goes a long way and helps out a ton. And let's break it down. Hope you enjoy. All right, so keep this stuff in mind for a second. The Frosties is going to reduce your ability cooldown while you are sprinting. And then Whisper of Shards is going to give us a five times grenade regeneration rate when you break a stasis crystal. So now with that in mind, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison with our base grenade cooldown at 100 discipline and then Whisper of Shards Frosties and then shards and frosties together. Our base cooldown was at a minute flat and then to my surprise shards was just over 30 seconds and frosties was just under 30 seconds. Going into this I did not know frosties would straight up have our cooldown. It's way more effective than I thought it would be. But when you pair frosties and shards together you get your grenade back in just eight seconds every time guaranteed. It's ridiculous. It's just incredible for having consistent damage output and add clear with our build, it makes it very reliable, I would say. But the grenade regeneration does not stop there because on our boots, we have absolution and innervation. So we get ability energy back when we pick up an orb of power. So on our gloves, we have firepower. So when we shatter dive something, we make an orb of power. And then we want to dodge always immediately after shatter diving, which is going to proc powerful attraction to scoop up that orb automatically and proc that absolution and innervation. But it's also going to proc bomber to give us a little nudge of grenade energy energy as well. So it's a nice little sequence of events that makes it consistent to get our grenade back even if we're not sprinting for frosties. Now the real reason Shatter Dive is so good right now is because of our artifact mods this season. First of all, we got Pillar of Ice that spawns a stasis crystal when you defeat a frozen combatant. And that's the reason we're running Whisper of Chains to get that free 40% damage resist because it feels like whatever we do, a free crystal always spawns out of nowhere as we're ad clearing. So it kind of feels like you have woven mail at all times, but also remember Bungie's review on the stuff they're working on for stasis they mentioned something called frost armor coming to the game that they're adding into the stasis subclass not sure what it is but i'm sure that when it's paired with whisperer chains it will be crazy so keep an eye out for this build when that happens and the other artifact mod that is the cream of the crop for this build is hail the storm it just blatantly outright says shattering a frozen target and stasis crystals deals more damage that's why you've suddenly been getting shatter dived in the crucible again. But it also has another ability that says shattering stasis crystals will create these little seeker things that slow targets. And that's excellent for one huge reason. When you slow an overload champion, it stuns them. I'll demonstrate in this clip here, it works. And remember that stasis shatter stuns unstops, so your glacier grenade alone can deal with two different champions. But so can your bow, because we are pairing this build with the Vergless Curve. Not a weapon you see very often, but in my eyes, this bow has one purpose and one purpose only, shatter diving. So the way this bow works is when you kill a combatant with it, it loads a hail barrage arrow on the left side of your screen. And when you hip fire the bow, it creates a stasis crystal. Now you can stack Hail Barrage up to a maximum of five arrows in the volley. And then with the volley of five Hail Barrages, you basically created your own Glacier Grenade with your bow, which you can then use to Shatter Dive with. It's pretty nice synergy. 
And you would think it's tedious to get Hail Barrage stacks, but it's actually pretty easy because enemies defeated by a crystal the bow creates will load more Hail Barrage stacks into it. So it's kind of like a stasis version of the Trinity Ghoul. It's a pretty forgiving weapon to be able to chain the perk. So between the bow and the insane Glacier Grenade cooldown, you're basically Shatter Diving crystals literally as fast as your Shatter Dive cooldown allows you to, which is about three seconds. More often than not, I want to Shatter Dive even faster than that but i have to sit and wait for my shatter dive cooldown so if the game let us we would actually be able to shatter dive every second or two this build is really that spammy it's not an exaggeration and i'm loving it this build has definitely earned its place on my in-game loadout hotbar now let's talk damage is shatter dive actually strong well between hail the storm and whisper of fissures which boosts our radius and damage of our shatters Oh, it's strong, all right. Here's an example against Carl with the barrage of five crystals from our bow. And you also get a great example of how enemies that are not champions or bosses get absolutely yeeted by our shatters if they survive it, which is a nice bonus and can sometimes cheese enemies off cliffs. We do about a bar of Carl's health, about one third, and a glacier grenade does more or less the same amount of damage. Now to compare that to something, here is a rocket from the Apex Predator, and it pretty much does the exact same amount as our shatter dives. So our shatter dives are basically pocket rockets we can use for free every eight seconds guaranteed, which is impressive as the thumbnail said. Now let's break down the rest of the build. We're running Grim Harvest to make a ton of stasis shards to get our melees back quickly, which is important, you'll see in a second. And for our fragments, we got Whisper of Torment to get grenade energy when we take damage. And this is actually very important. I tested it and our grenade came back in 24 seconds with it and one minute without it. So it's definitely required. And then of course we got shards, chains, and fissures, which we already talked about. And then we got conduction to make our stasis shards track towards us so we don't need to run around for them. Now on to the mod setup. Now I did experiment with a lot of different setups and like armor charge, grenade kickstart setups, but this setup just felt better. Just something about it was very consistent and easy. So this build wants to make a ton of orbs of power, not only for absolution and innovation like we talked about earlier, but also for recuperation to get some health back. Because like I said, after shatter diving, you always want to dodge immediately after the proc powerful attraction and scoop that orb, whether it be from your bow shatter dive or your glacier grenade shatter dive. And we can basically build our own worm husk crown because we dodge and pick up the orb from recuperation, we get our health back. It's very good for survivability and I highly recommend doing this. So we got a few more ways to make orbs of power here. We got reaper, so we dodge and the next weapon kill is gonna make an orb on our helmet. We got two siphons, we got our stasis siphon for our bow and then we also got arc siphon because our special weapon is an arc weapon. More on that in a second. And then we have heavy handed, so our shuriken kills make orbs. And that is why Grim Harvest giving us a bunch of shards to get our melees back is very, very good. And then our melees also matter because of focusing strike. We get a melee hit, it gives us some dodge energy back. Now you could run impact induction to get some grenade energy back on a shuriken hit, but I felt like our grenades charge quick enough and I just wanted more ways to proc that powerful attraction. So I opted for focusing strike. And then I got a heavy ammo finder because why not? And then various resists on the chest. You can swap these out accordingly depending on the activity. Now for our stats, I opted for triple hundreds in mobility, resilience, and discipline and make sure you always maintain a minimum of three intellect for soft cap purposes. Invest the rest of the strength and do not worry about recovery. Now as for our other weapon choices, in my heavy slot I prefer an eager edge sword because obviously one hidden benefit of running Shatter Dive Hunter in PvE is that you can shatter skate so you can get around the maps very very quickly. It's great for speed running around certain activities. But if you were doing an activity where you need to deal with a lot of yellow bars and fat targets, I would go for a GL like the Cataphract with auto loading and bait and switch or a when to go with auto loading and explosive light. Now on to the special slot and my special choice here is the iterative loop with enhanced lead from Golden Demolitionist. When you enhance Demolitionist and have it on a fusion archetype, it gives you 22% of your grenade energy back on final blows, which is obviously very good for your glacier grenade cooldown, but also because it's a fusion, it's good for bursting down fatter targets. But I can also see an argument for an auto loading breach loaded grenade launcher like the explosive personality for example because it's good to pull out really quick and weaken a target so you can pick up the kill with your bow to get a hail barrage stack and then there's also the option of indebted kindness the rocket sidearm from the dungeon if you are doing an activity with barrier champions because that can be your barrier option so you can keep your virgilus curve on because remember that your crystals from your bow and your glacier grenades are able to stun unstops and overload so you only really need an anti-barrier weapon which is going to be that indebted kindness so that about does for the build uh gameplay loop just keep shatter dive dodging shatter dive dodging you always want to dodge after that shatter dive just keep that in mind that's something you got to get used to 
Now I am very impressed with this build as the thumbnail said. When I was using it earlier with the Six Coyote, I was like, this is good, it's passable to make a video on. But when I tried the Frosties, I was like, oh my goodness, I love this, this is awesome. It's just very consistent. Being able to have that shatter dive guaranteed every eight seconds is very solid for a tougher content. So you always know you can output some damage and do some ad clear. Because with a lot of other builds, you find that you're a sitting duck in some situations and you're just waiting for like ammo to drop or something. Thing. But with this build, you always know you're gonna be able to do something, which is awesome. Now, if I had to use Stasis Hunter in a Grandmaster Nightfall, I would probably use the Renewal Grasp because that allows it to keep your distance and obviously Shatter Dive doesn't. But anything lesser than a Grandmaster, I would easily pick the Frosty's Shatter Dive build. It's pretty reliable and I highly recommend giving it a try. As always, I'll leave a dim loadout link to the build down below in the description and the pinned comment if you would like to give it a try. And if you got any buddies who are Hunter mains, I'd appreciate it if you share the video with them. I'm sure they find it enjoyable. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that like button and drop a comment because interacting with a video like that really helps out the algorithm and goes a long way. So I'd really appreciate it. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you here. And with that, I'll catch you in the next video. See you later.